friends, I'm Amy Morgan, the feature writer for the San Antonio Marriage Initiative. I am so delighted to introduce Dr. Alan Hawkins to you today. Dr. Hawkins has been a professor in the Brigham Young University School of Family Life since 1990. In 2012, he received the university's prestigious Carl G. Mazur Research Award and held the Camilla E. Kimball Endowed Professorship of Home and Family Living from 2014 to 2019. In 2003, Dr. Hawkins was a visiting scholar with the Office of Planning, Research, and Evaluation for the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, working on the Federal Healthy Marriages Initiative. He's also served twice as the chair of the Utah Marriage Commission. He also served on the National Divorce Decision-Making Project, which documented the prevalence of couples experiencing divorce ambivalence and whether intervention affected marital outcomes. Dr. Hawkins published Should I Try to Work It Out? A Guidebook for Individuals and Couples at the Crossroads to Divorce, which became the curriculum for the class couples with minor children are required to take before their divorce can be finalized in Utah. The guidebook has been recently updated and will be re-released this fall. Dr. Hawkins has some very interesting information to share with us today from his research about current marital trends and how they impact families. Dr. Hawkins, thank you so much for being here. Well, thanks for your interest. It's good. Um, I'm looking forward to it. Well, we always love, I always love when I get to talk to you. You are just, you just are such a wealth of information um, on topics, you know, a little different for some of our marriage champions because you are, you know, an esteemed researcher in this field. Um, you know, so this is really, really interesting. Let's talk about your guidebook. I mean, this has been such an, an interesting piece of work and, and it's, even its generation was kind of unusual. So let's talk about it. What's in it? How's it used? How did it get started? It actually got started back in about uh, 2008. Um, 2000, well, actually in 2007, I was uh, back when, when we had newspapers back in the dinosaur era, I was reading through uh, the section that was describing uh, legislative action going on in the state of Utah. And, um, came across a, a, a legislation that was passed that surprised me. Um, it required a one hour divorce orientation education um, class um, for uh, divorcing parents who had minor children. And I thought I was kind of in, um, you know, aware of uh, the legislation around family issues going on, but I'd missed that one. And um, I uh, subsequently, contacted the legislator who sponsored that bill and said, uh, you know, what are you using for your curriculum? And um, she said, well, that's, uh, we don't really have one that will be up to individual educators in the various counties who will be providing these programs. And, uh, and it got me thinking, you know, I said, well, I, I think I'll work on a, a curriculum for you. And um, that was the first version uh, of our book. Um, um, should I try to work it out? And uh, it wasn't uh, adopted statewide by any means, but a few of the educators did it. And, and indeed, I actually enlisted and started teaching that in my county um, for about uh, five years. Um, we, we subsequently did a, a one another revision of it just to update it with some things. Um, but it's been about 10 years now, and we're feeling like uh, it's getting a little gray on the edges. and and wanted to update it with a few um with most the most recent research and then a few other issues that have popped out for us and uh so uh that's what i've been uh working on uh this summer but it's um it's a it's a free resource we've consciously made the decision um each time uh to self-publish it and control the access to it and make it free uh, you can order a hard copy from uh, Amazon or some other uh, book order, but um, uh, it's also available as an online resource uh, for free in a number of places. And we, we just we don't want it to we don't want cost to be any uh, barrier for it. We want people to have access to this information, which is essentially if you're thinking about divorce. Um, either in kind of early stages or maybe even in later stages, there's a lot of questions that we know that go through people's minds. 
And interestingly, I don't think there are great resources, great resources out there um, that are kind of pulled all together to, to help uh, people think about uh, um, you know, the answers, research-based answers to these questions. And so that's what we've tried to do. What are all those questions that are going through your mind? And what can the research help us uh, understand uh, about the answers to those questions? Well, I have given it a deep dive and I just, we really have found it to be so informative and so, you know, very balanced approach, you know, really getting people to think through things and to be prepared and then offering, you know, some ideas that we don't just have to go galloping forward toward divorce. If, if, if you want to take some time and think through things and then think that maybe you do want to work it out. It, it really opens the door to that that stage of thought. Tell us why that's so important to have a little more time um, to contemplate this uh, big life decision, especially when you have ch minor children in the home. Yeah, uh, researchers have tended to look at divorce, um, um, you know, once it's occurred or uh, during the actual legal divorce process, and. Um, uh, one thing we now know is that they miss in, um, a lot of people who are having lower level thoughts uh, about it and tend to have those thoughts for, um, you know, on and off or even for a steady amount of time, but even for years. Um, and um, we, uh, uh, I, th I think there are um, some ways of uh, helping those kinds of individuals that are different from um, uh, how we've approached uh, the topic of divorce, which is just gonna, okay, it's going to happen or it has happened, now what do we do? But um, people are thinking it's the most difficult decision that people ever make. And the research on how people make decisions about to divorce or to continue trying to work it out, uh, that, that research is, uh, um, is pretty rare. Uh, it's actually surprised us. And so um, we've, we've just tried to, to hit that spot. If you're thinking, you've got questions, and I think we've got some things for you to think about. In the process of thinking about those questions, uh, answering that, getting sort of the research-based answers, and then applying those to yourself, we think that takes time. And for most people, a little bit more time thinking through these things, uh, I think, is, is a, a, a good thing. We acknowledge, we try to be very fair and even handed in the book and acknowledge that uh, divorce is necessary at times. And even I think um, the moral and ethical choice um, as well. But um, I, I, people uh, tend to really struggle to get clarity. Um, and even after a divorce has occurred, a lot of ambivalence uh, about that. It's the hardest thing probably ever, that we ever do is making that choice. Um, so taking a little more time and being a little, a little more systematic and kind of working through these various questions uh, that uh, you probably have in your head, uh, we think that's a good thing and uh, that will bring you to more clarity. Um, and if that results in a divorce, we still think you'll be in a better place to be able to deal with that and help um, you know, your family deal with that. Um, but for others, um, it may help them to see that um, that choosing to work harder on the relationship um, could also be uh, an option for them. Well, and that's that's one thing, and I do want to talk a little bit more about what exactly is in this book. But like, I'm looking at one of your titles to a chapter: "Can unhappy marriages become happy again, and how?" And just even the thought. Just to throw that out there in the in the atmosphere, because again, in your work with the divorce decision making project, you realize people have this circular thinking. Yeah. Um, sometimes they're happy, sometimes they're not. Something can happen, but just to even throw that idea out that an unhappy marriage has potential to become happy again, yeah. you know, in some you know some do, and but but even that some would, and then you know is is very helpful. Well, we, and we try to share that research and, um, you know, the actual numbers, uh, you know, some, uh, we do see a lot of marriages going from a kind of a bad place to a very good place. Um, but and over time, then you see good marriages uh, struggling again. And, um, 
you know, so we do try to paint a more dynamic picture and give people tools for thinking about what are those challenges and are those things we could address. I think, um, you know, the most important chapter in our book is, is, uh, uh, is not, in our new book will be our chapter three, but is, is what can we do if, if uh, we want to slow down and think about, you know, working on the relationship again before we really confront that, that, uh, that really difficult decision uh, about divorcing. You know, what can we do? And so we try to walk people through different options uh, that are out there and give them help uh, for that. And those options are everything from just kind of self-guided work, which is what actually is the most common kind of thing, to seeking help from um, marriage education classes, um, and uh, but also um, counseling and different ways of appro approaching counseling. So we, we try and help them think through those options and those possibilities. And are those likely to be um, helpful uh, or not? We also talk about uh, separation and reconciliation. Um, although the research there uh, could be stronger, but we share what we do know and um, uh, help people think about those. Because I know that those are questions that are in people's minds um, as well. So um, anyway, we, we, we try and share with them all of that information. And we actually encourage them with kind of writing exercises to think through those things for themselves. Um, all of that will slow down their their thinking process and slow down um, the you know this decision making, which uh, I think will ultimately bring them to a place of more clarity uh, and more assurance of what they want. And especially for somebody who, again, like you said, this is a very important decision. This is affecting children. This is affecting, you know, it, it's going to change the trajectory of at least two people's lives. And if there's yeah. children more. Right. And so just just in doing those exercises yeah. to, you know, thinking about education, hanging on or moving on, you know, thinking about education, you know, what even is there thinking about counseling or is your spouse willing to discuss their feelings? But just even almost normalizing the idea that if you're thinking about divorce, you should really not make a hasty decision. Right. And and then if you do decide after contemplative thought that this is right, you have also counted the cost. You're yeah. counting the cost financially because that's part of this book too. You've counted the cost financially. You count the cost emotionally for not just you, but your children. Yeah, and we so we do try to help them be more aware of the challenges that they're, that they'll uh, be facing and what the research says about uh, the potential effects of divorce. And I think we are pretty even handed um, but fair in how we treat that research. You know, one of the things that we do in this, this uh, uh, third edition that we're working on here is um, we actually do try to deal, um, uh, do this normalization thing a little bit more. And one of the things we've learned over the past decade is that thinking about having thoughts about divorce is um, really quite common. More than half of couples go through a period where one or both of them have had some serious thoughts uh, about divorce. At any one time, about a quarter um, of spouses out there are having some kinds of thoughts. So most of them are you know, uh, pretty low level, um, not really serious, but uh, are having thoughts about it. And we try and help people understand that. I mean, it's hard to avoid in our culture when you're experiencing problems, uh, the, the D word just pops up. It's there in the culture. You can't get away from it. And so don't be scared uh, by it. Deal with it in a little more rational way. And of course, that's so hard to do, you know, when we're experiencing that kind of relationship pain and struggles that we are. But, but we can bring more to that process. At least that's our hope. Well, and you have, you have, not only are you revising this, but you have made this easy to access, at least the information from this. And, you know, granted, you taught the courses live for five years, and then you don't teach them anymore, but there's a, a really good reason. Explain that, because well, these resources are available. Right. Um, the, the class now is offered online, and so we do the, the online version of it. So my uh, at least my digital image is, is uh, there talking. <laughs> Preserved for eternity. <laughs> um, 
uh, although we're hoping uh, this fall to actually uh, revise and update that uh, as well. Um, and actually that resource would be available. Uh, this is a Utah resource, that, um, that um, recorded version uh, of uh, this instruction. And it's out there for others, but, um, uh, and they could get access to it. But we're, we actually, we're gonna be thinking about ways to, um, you know, to make this more and more available uh, to uh, people wherever and are very grateful for organizations like like uh, the San Antonio Marriage Initiative for their interest in trying to make a resource like, like, like this available to as many people as possible. And one of the things we tell is though, for those who uh, get a hold of this resource is if you know other people who would benefit from it, share it with them. Don't uh, we, we we don't have copyrights. Well, I guess we have a copyright, but we've said yeah, you're free to share. And uh, we just, we want this to be used. Well, and I think that's so wonderful for our marriage champions. You know, so often as a marriage champion, you may be working. Right. With you may be mentoring a couple or you yeah. may, somebody may confide in you at, you know, as you're their first responder and, and to have, I mean, this is a resource that you can say, right. hey, just work through the, you know, watch, watch Dr. Hawkins, you know, in the privacy of your home, you can watch this video just an hour. You know, you wouldn't even have to listen. Just watching a little bit would be enough to know whether they are willing to commit to doing the workbook and count the cost, understand your thoughts. And I just think that's such a neat thing. And you had mentioned that at, when the third division comes out this fall, that you're going to make it available. So like Sammy and organizations like, like ours and across the nation can make it available on our sites and through our socials. And of course, everyone will be able to find this. And uh, so we'll have a good way to get these in the hands of anyone who, who would like them, whether the probably the online version will be the easiest. Probably so, but I, some people are old fashioned like me and they like, you know, to hold a, a book in their hands and, and actually, uh, d you know, do the writing and the exercises. And so um, we'll make the, the book available at cost, um, you know, through an Amazon.com or something like that um, for those who want that. But yes, there'll be an online version. Uh, we also have, uh, we've kind of taken the book and put it online. Um, with our website, yourdivorcequestions.org. Um, and so that's another thing that we will need to do, hopefully in the near future, is, is update and revise that website as well. But um, I mean, the, the changes that we've made for this third edition are not, are not dramatic. And uh, so that website, I think, can still be helpful. And we've, uh, we've actually got some content there that we don't have uh, in the book. So there'll be uh, multiple ways to, to access this this kind of information. Well, that website is also another great resource for our champions to just, again, to to be educate themselves. Right, right. And so then they have something then to tell that couple they're mentoring or in their church ministry, um, just a really nice. And you said, even though it needs to be updated a little, it's still up and running and live and going, right? Uh, it is. And, and I think you make a good point. I think it can be, uh, you can, as, as somebody trying to help, uh, it's pretty easy to get overwhelmed when you hear them talking about they've, they've been thinking and talking about divorce and and it, it can be uh, um, hard. But I think the, the information in this book can help um, our mentors and our champions um, and our educators out there uh, understand that, that, you know, this is really a pretty normal thing. Most of us go through the, these kinds of challenges. And so uh, controlling our own emotions, regulating our own emotions around that, I think can help us to be more effective um, champions. Yeah, to stay calm and not, yeah. you know, just let your hair get on fire if somebody mentions they're thinking about. And maybe even share our own stories uh, that way. Um, you know, uh, because like I say, most of us have had these kinds of times and experiences and uh, sharing those can sometimes be those stories can sometimes be more powerful than all 200 pages of the book combined. So, well, and you do talk about that, about how, you know, the unhappy marriage can become happy again through, I mean, we've heard lots and, you know, throughout all the, the different, you know, national leaders like yourself that I've interviewed. So everyone has many, many stories of right. when, you know, with, with, whether it's counseling or enrichment or just a life group, you know, support, you know, people really are able and isn't there some statistic about 
you know, waiting in another, is, is it two years or three years? And your marriage is in a completely different place. You know, people whose marriage was, was, I think that was, there was a statistic there somewhere, wasn't yeah. there? Yeah. Um, some, um, work done, um, about, about 20 years ago now, but, um, uh, you know, following those uh, who were uh, report that they're very unhappy in their marriage, if you follow them for five years, yes, you do see um, about twenty uh, percent are divorced um, over that five-year period. The interesting thing, though, is that eighty percent are still together, um, and more than half of the of that eighty percent. Uh, report now being in a really good place. You know, some of them are still struggling, have ongoing issues, uh, feel like maybe it's better, um, but are still struggling. But you've got, um, you know, about 40 to 50 percent of those who say at one, you know, uh, at one point that uh, they're very unhappy in their marriage. Five years later, you look at them and it looks like they're in a really pretty solid place. Um, and so, um, uh, there are always times uh, when divorce is needed and necessary, and sometimes um, uh, e e uh, the faster uh, it's, it, it, they need to do it quickly. But uh, the more common situation is a slow go approach uh, will probably be best for them. And they may actually find themselves um, in a situation in which they've overcome those challenges, those stresses that were there that were making the marriage so hard have eased or gone in a different direction, or they've just developed their marital muscles um, so that they're able to lift those weights um, even um, uh, more easily. Uh, all those things uh, combined, you know, can make uh, for, um, you know, a, a, pr a much better situation down the road. I mean, I think about some of the things that are in all the training, the, the conflict resolution, the communication skills, but then like you're saying, sometimes there are life events, you know, maybe those troublesome teenagers aren't in your house anymore. Right. <laughs> well, just, we, um, stress uh, it just has a way of spreading out and, and infecting everything. And, and sometimes then um, that stress makes us feel like our, our marriage must not be good enough. Um, and it's, you know, it's not making me happy. Well, um, you know, uh, uh, sometimes uh, those stresses will dissipate and we'll find out, no, that I'm actually pretty impressed. My marriage was up to that task and was strong enough uh, to overcome that. And that could actually create an incredible strength and depth. Uh, to the marriage and the relationship. And you talk to most long-term married people and they will tell you a story of some kind like that, where they went through very serious challenges and problems and were unsure whether they were gonna survive, but they did. And now they look back on that time as, a, as an incredible strength uh, to their relationship. And we know that doesn't occur for, for everyone. Um, and uh, certainly in our book, we try to be fair uh, to that. We're also trying to be fair to the reality that um, for many people going through a divorce, it's not their choice. It's their spouse's choice for them. Yes. And uh, that's not what they want, um, but it's that choice is forced on them. And so uh, they need some help about, um, you know, what they're going through uh, as well. I'm so glad you brought that up because that that is a place where some of the practical aspects of your information, whether it be on your web, you know, the yourdivorcequestions.org or whether it would be through the book, you're right. There are people and, and that person whose spouse is, you know, leaving them, they still need to know what oh. to be prepared for with their finances. And they oh. still need to know what to be prepared for with their children's emotional health. And oh. And that this and there are legal options as well that they can pursue that can help uh, sometimes make that divorce process less conflictual. There and there's been a lot of progress over the last ten years um, in in the way that that couples you know approach the divorce legally with mediation, with collaborative law, and those kinds of things that I think. Uh, are a real positive uh, sign of what of what's going on, and so I um, we've got chapters that deal with those. I think that are very informative, as well as uh, one of the things we do much more of in the book is talk about co-parenting, and how to approach that, and and how to do that well, um, and because um, uh, 
um, many, you know, it, it, that's going to be the experience for many. They're going to be co-parents now, and there are better and worse ways to do that. Oh, that is so important. I know we've um, we've uh, do some work with some of the collaborative lawyers here, and they're just it's such. And most people don't even know that there are oh, different right. ways to even look for legal counsel. And again, too, even if you're looking for legal counsel, because this class is for people that are signing up for a divorce in Utah or and with application elsewhere. But just because you seek a representation, there are better and worse types. And that doesn't mean that you have to necessarily go through with it. Right, right. Uh, and that's one of the things we also point out to them is that, you know, um, there are people who change their mind um, even after a decree uh, has been made. But if it's not filed, um, you are still married. And um, I mean, it's not very common, but um, we uh, we we do think it's important that people understand the process, the legal process that you go through, and um, and and how how you know what those options are. Um, you know, to do it in a way that's probably going to be better for all involved. I think two of the, the most scary phrases in all of American life that I can think of as being you're being audited by the IRS or yeah. you, you, your spouse is filing for divorce. I, yeah. I can't. Both of those, you know, guaranteed to, to throw your emotions in a, in a whirlwind. Yep. Yep. And, uh, and, and we know now we've from uh, some recent research that probably in about Three out of four divorces. There's one person who's the um, who's the kind of who's uh, pushing it, and the other person is um, at best ambivalent or or wants to push back against it. That is the most common scenario, um, and so we hope that our our book can help um, you know that spouse who's trying to. Um, you know, kind of put on the brakes a little bit. It can help them um, uh, in that situation. Well, that is good. Would you like to up tell us about some of the updates? Uh, I've told you about some of them and say we've done a lot more on co-parenting. Uh, mm -hmm. That's one of the changes that we've made. Uh, we've also talked more about the option of uh, separation. Uh, some couples think about that. Uh, um, mo most of them think about uh, informal, not not legally, not not a separation with, in which uh, you um, enter legal documents with the court. But uh, we try to help them think about that and uh, give them some guidelines. The reality is is that sliding into a, a decision, okay, okay, let's separate. Um, it, it does not tend to work. It, it's too am, ambiguous and, and so many things unanswered and you don't know, um, okay, is this working or not working or how does this end? Um, and so if you're going to do separation, you, you need to do it in a, in a very intentional way and answer some of those questions first. There are reasons why you would do it, but uh, there are ways to do it more effectively. So we've tried to deal uh, with that one, but probably sounded a, a note of uh, more of caution, um, because once you kind of take that step, that big step in, in a direction about uh, se separating residences, um, that tends to create a momentum that, that can overpower other kinds of efforts to, to try and work on uh, the relationship. So we do that. You know, we do a few other things. One of the things we, we do that we didn't do in previous editions is that why is why is modern marriage so challenging? What, you know, why are we having these thoughts uh, about divorce? And again, trying to normalize that uh, for couples. And uh, we've also shared more of the research, uh, a lot of which we've done ourselves on, you know, uh, thinking about divorce and, and how common it is. And, um, uh, and whether or not, um, you know, this is something that uh, should be really scary or whether it's really uh, something that almost, you know, all couples go through. So we've done that. We've done a few other updates and things. For instance, in, you know, we talk about, so what are those, those hard reasons for divorce, um, abuse and um, adultery and, and infidelity and addictions and things like so we 
We've we tried to update there, especially in the sections around ad, uh, addictions, um, some more there, because that's become such a significant issue. Um, we, we talk a little bit more about the issue around pornography um, there, because there's been a lot more work done on that, and it seems to be a much more salient issue. And I think there are some misunderstandings out there about that. We also talk about one of those things that seems to be emerging now that is right uh, kind of on the forefront of things. Um, and, and that is um, uh, uh, this thing we've called now polyamory, uh, where we open up our, or we're getting partners asking us to open up our marriage sexually. And is that infidelity or is that something different and how to think about that? Now, it's not um, it's not especially common yet, but it does seem to be uh, increasing and younger people seem to be facing that a lot more often uh, these days. So we try to help them think through some of those kinds of things. You wrote those... an article about that that was very interesting because I, you know, I'm, I'm a little older <laughs> than married 27 years. And I'm, to me, I'm like, well, that's a thing. <laughs> but apparently it, that it's a thing that's yeah. starting to seep into our marriage culture. It is. It's it's seeping in there, and young people are more um, a little more open to it, and so um, I, I think they're going to be facing this issue more often. And so we try to give them some perspective and share what we know um, from the research on that. Um, and in a, in a next edition, we'll probably have even more information about that. <laughs> oh, well, and I know there was one other area that you had touched on, and you had actually some kind of kind of encouraging news. It was about the gray divorce, about yeah. the families and, 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 and the origin of, of what was going on there. Yeah. Um, uh, you've, you've heard the term gray divorce out there. And in there, and in there is a reality that uh, older individuals, um, you know, uh, are experiencing the, some of the higher rates of divorce right now that we see uh, out there. Um, but there's a couple of things about that that we know now that maybe we didn't know a few years ago. And that is those divorces are coming mostly from those who are in remarriages and second and third marriages, not those who are in long term first marriages. It does exist. And those are really hard um, uh, on on the individuals and the children and everyone involved. It feels like I think um, Dr. Bill Doherty, who I know you've uh, had involved uh, with your marriage champions, um, uh, he he talks about that as as um, like you know a, a hundred year old tree in the town square dying off and how how you know how people mourn that. Um, so we know that it still exists out there, but most of the gray divorce is coming from those who have not been married a long time, who are in second and third marriages. I still think that's something to be concerned about and something to, to mourn, but, um, um, but it's different from that long-term 30-year, 40-year marriage uh, that's breaking up. Uh, I don't think um, it's, it's something that, um, you know, if you've been married for 35 years and, and it's been a good marriage, you, you know, your chances are really good um, that uh, you're going to go to your grave in love um, and with that person. And, uh, uh, you know. Oh, Dr. Hawkins, that is the most, that is such an encouraging way to end. Because okay. it's always so fascinating to talk to you. But what a great encouragement for our champions um, as we're casting vision, as we're helping others. Um, thank you so much for being here. You're welcome, and, and thanks for your interest, and, and God bless for all that you do. Oh, well, it has been just a pleasure. And as always, Marriage Champions, you can find out more about Dr. Hawkins and his work at samarriage.org.